And if you're here, then you already know by now, because of the title, that this is the Transformers Generation Selects G2 inspired Sandstorm. And I've looked at the Seeker mold before, and uh, I've been sort of iffy on it. And I said then that I thought it might work better for the cone heads. I also can say that this is my first cone head, but we'll explain kind of how and why that is in just a little bit. There's actually a surprising amount more here to explore and discover and explain and a couple of caveats I need to address when we dive into everything to do with G2 Sandstorm in the latest Got By True review. <laughs> Hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gopon. As always, man, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, light them up, baby. Hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton. It lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, all the groups that I either am a mod for or an admin for. All those links are in the description below. Um, pff, while you're at it, why don't you check me out all across social media... All those links are also in the description. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. You can check us out on Patreon, see what we offer to you through Teespring. Or, of course, you can hit the join button right here on YouTube and become a channel member. And if you yourself, by the end of this, have an interest in getting G2 Sandstorm, then why not check out the Big Bad Toy Store? Pre-orders are up now for this guy. But, more to the point, uh, like I said, there's a lot here to unpack. Some people recently have... Uh, address the idea of consistency to me. I'm going to talk about that. They made a reference between Soundwave and the Seekers and I'm going to talk about that reference in relation to the mold as it's used for the main Seekers and the way I see it as used for the Coneheads because I think it needs to be kind of addressed differently for both and I'll explain why. Um, I'll say this, I do think that it works infinitely better for the cone heads, which was something I suspected all along. But you know what? How about we head over to the table and dive right in and take a closer look at this guy. And so we get ready to dive into G2 Decepticon Sandstorm. Although, I'll note this right now because I'm definitely going to forget it later on. The Decepticon logos on this guy are G1, not G2, and I personally am cool with it because if I had one Seeker and one Conehead sticking out with just those G2 Decepticon symbols, I'd have to cover them over with a sticker anyway because it would drive me batty. But the story of this guy is not quite as easy as you might think. Most people that know me know by now that I have preferred this the Siege Tetrajet Seekers over the original trio. We'll talk about that in comparison and why. But I'm going to not be quite as harsh in my criticism of this guy as those other ones. I'm going to explain why in a minute. But before we get to that, we're going to look at his packaging first. It's packaging. It's selects packaging. They all look alike. It says Decepticon Sandstorm. It looks like this. We're done. And instructions to find the cool. So I've got to address a couple of elephants in the room here. Funny enough, when I initially ordered the Coneheads, I thought that this guy was going to be the last one I would get. Originally, I was scheduled to get the two-pack on, I think, like the 16th of October or something. I have since had six delay notifications for that two-pack. So I don't know when I'm going to get Dirge or Ramjet. Originally... The rumor was that Thrust was going to be released in November, and this guy was supposed to be released in December. <laughs> Funny enough, this is the version I had first. Go figure. Elephant number two, consistency. A little while ago, I did a uh, list of the top ten, my top ten, best and worst of 2020. I also did the top ten as voted on by you guys, but... That's another story. And on my list, I said, I, I said that one of the best was Soundwave, and I said one of the worst for me was Starscream, or the Seekers in general. And somebody called me out on it and said, hey, how can you have these criticisms? I mean, you know, Soundwave also has hollow uh, arms and no wrist swivel. I forgot about the fact he had a hollow arms because I actually have a arm filler there. Uh, I give the wrist swivel. I understand. But 
As I explained there, here's the difference. The only other versions, say, of Soundwave that we had to compare was The Siege, probably Titan's Return, and Fall of Cybertron. All of them somewhat comparable in terms of the engineering, in terms of the range of motion of articulation and everything else. Equally, I said, when we look at the uh, Seekers, while you can certainly draw a direct line between the classics mold for, say, Starscream, Thundercracker, and Skywarp, right to the Earthrise, let us not forget that in between there we did have the stupendously well done Fall of Cybertron Deluxes, as well as the Siege. So those three main Seekers have had different ideas used to uh, pull them off, different engineering techniques and plans and strategies used to pull them off. So I look at the main trio and say, it can be done better. You know how I know? Because the Fall of Cybertron and the Siege Seekers both prove that you can incorporate different engineering ideas that proves they can be done better. Plus, they're prolific enough characters that they're going to get redone over and over. But then we get to the Coneheads. And first things first, this is actually an homage to an unreleased G2 Seeker that just never happened. The other one was going to be a black repaint as Blackout. So I'm kind of happy to get this, and I'm happy that it's a Conehead. I'm cool with that. The other reason that I kind of will be a little bit easier on this guy is because the only other version of the Coneheads, because they're not as prolific as the main trio, the only other version of the Coneheads we have is the classics. We don't have Fall of Cybertron Coneheads to compare to, and we don't officially, anyway, have Siege Coneheads, even though the Siege body mold for Coneheads was used in the Earthrise Netflix series. And you can get some custom parts to make that mold into the Coneheads. Even if that was done, as excellent as the Siege Tetrajet mold is, the body type would be incorrect for the Coneheads because of the placement of the wings. So, as I said when I looked at Starscream a long time ago, I honestly feel like this mold is better served for the Coneheads than the main Seekers. Speaking of which, here is that whole main trio. Now, uh, just a couple of things here, again, worth noting. Funny enough, I have handled three versions of the Skywarp and Thundercracker set. In the first version that I handled, the version that I reviewed, I had to notch out a part of Thundercracker's wing so that it fit correctly. This is my set. Uh, all four wings are fine. I didn't have to notch anything out, so that QC issue was fixed, at least on my copy. And the third one, interestingly enough, had a Skywarp in it that did not have the screaming face. It just had a regular Seeker face. <sighs> Weird, right? But I looked at the Siege Starscream back in episode 545, and I said then that honestly, his paint apps and stuff were 9.5 to a 10. A 9.5 in a package. I did some custom paint work on him. It became a 10. The articulation was a 10, and the transformation was a 7.5. Mostly because a lot of people, not me, but a lot of people have experienced issue with that uh, chest. Then we get to the Earthrise that I looked at in episode 668. And I said that this Starscream was a 9 because he shouldn't have these wings on his lower legs, basically. But otherwise, he pretty much looks like Starscream. I said that his articulation was a 9 to a 9.5. It's not perfect because he's missing a waist and he doesn't have the wrist rotation. But it was all right. Not as good as the, the Siege, but all right. And, again, I said the transformation was about a seven and a half. It, too, has its fiddly parts, especially the way the arm is handled. I don't like it. Uh, out of interest, I also compared the main Seeker trio and all three of the main Seeker trio here, between Earthrise and Siege. I compared them all in episode 750. So... Like I said, there's a lot here that they could go compared to. And these do look good together. When I eventually get the other cone heads, I'll look at all of the Seekers that I got all together just to show that display. But this is basically what we have for now. The main comparison that we're worried about here, however, will be with the only earlier version that makes sense. As everybody knows, Sandstorm is a reuse of the Earthrise Ramjet 
mold. Well, the only thing we have to compare it to, because the last time we got cone heads was in Classics Universe, so the only thing we have it to compare it to is the Classics Universe for Amgen. It's the only thing that really makes sense in terms of comparing mainline character offerings. I mean, we're not going to compare it to like MP or something like that. That would make no sense. This, however, does. So, I looked at the original Ramjet and the custom paintwork I did on it. Get this, back in episode four. Episode true review number four. I went back and I watched it to kind of get some information for this. Man, oh man. <laughs> man, that, uh, that, was, that was something. That was something. So, paint apps. Uh, no comparison. I said that the original Ramjet was an 8. Obviously, this is a completely different thing. Uh, the Sandstorm is extremely reminiscent of what we were supposed to get with the beiges and the nice bronzy brown, actually. Honestly, and in, in uh, plain mode, I think it looks really cool. A lot of people don't like the sand speckling and say it looks like chocolate chips or something on him. I dig it. I think that there's a lot of paint detail on this guy. Even on his kneecaps and stuff. I'm going to say that the Paint for Sandstorm is honestly 10. Then we get to the articulation. I said the articulation for the original was only a 6. And I also said the transformation for the original was a 10. So let's take him out of it. Let's look at the articulation next for this guy. So, if I said the original was a 6, what about this guy? Well, the head can go up and down and left and right. So it's a better head. The arms can go all the way around. I'm not sure if they can do that on the original. They might be able to. We do have a uh, elbow to maybe a little over 90. We do have a bicep swivel, and I will point this out. On the main, um, I guess, trio of seekers, when I turn the bicep, because the back of the bicep, unlike Siege, is hollow, especially on Starscream, even more so than Thundercracker and Skywarp, the plastic like bends, like it, it flexes, and that makes me uncomfortable. I will say this, and I'm happy to say this, on this one, it moves perfect. There is no bending or flexing. The wrist, they can go up again like that if, if that's what you want to do, but there's no rotation. What a shame. I think the arms on all of this should have been the arms that were used on Siege. There's no reason that you couldn't have used those arms, and they were infinitely better than this. No waste. There's your biggest bummer. No waste. Word is that there was supposed to be a waste and they nixed it because of what they were trying to fit in here, which I don't know what that is. Hollowness? I don't know. Um, yeah, I think that whole, I think the, it, had the arms been engineered differently, you could have engineered the torso differently to give us a waste. That's a shame. The hip skirt here should be in three separate pieces instead of one piece. As it is, the leg can go forward that far. It can't go back very far for out to the side. Um, like it can, they can go out okay. We do have an ankle tilt. By the way, I do feel like all of the joints and hinges on this guy are smoother than they are on the main seekers, on any of my main seekers. I feel like everything here works better, to be honest with you. Um, and actually, like, it, it is smoother. We have the thigh swivel built inside the thigh, which I do like. I think that's a smart way to do business. Taking this up, we do have a, a nice deep knee, and you can move the wing however you kind of like. Uh, again, we have the hollow toes. What a bummer that is. I don't, I don't dig the hollow toes. But all that being said, the other Earth Earthrise are like a nine to a nine and a half in terms of their articulation. I'm gonna say this guy's a nine point seven five. A waist would be nice, wrist would be nice, but he's better than the main trio because every hinge here moves smoothly and I don't feel like, like even in terms of his knees, like the, the knees here tab in so nice and secure, like when I bend the knee, the knee doesn't come on tab. On all three of the other main seekers, they do. So, so far we have a 10 and we have a 9.75. Pretty excellent for a cone head. And while I see things that could be improved, remember, do not forget that our comparison here is with the classics. So this is blowing the classics out of the water so far. What about the transformation? Well, we're gonna take his blasters off of his arms. We're going to, and I'm gonna do this quick because we've kind of seen it and what's different here is somewhat minimal. We open up the arm and we should be able to 
Open that out and I'm hoping collapse this down. I don't, man, I don't like this transformation. There, that goes in, this comes up and over. I just, I don't know, I find the Siege arms way smoother, personally. Like, infinitely smoother. Oh, man, oh man, this is brutal. Trying to get that up, up, and over. Whew! I do that because it drives me batty. Uh, shout out to Kato, bleh, uh, because he had the notion of opening the chest by pushing in on the pauldrons, and I never thought of that before, and I have paint scraping on my star screen. This guy doesn't have paint, so you're not going to get paint scraping, which is nice. Then we pick this up over, be careful, because apparently the top of this is painted and can scrape. Bring that over and up. I like this way of doing the head much better. I know it's a faux head, but I like it infinitely better than what we had before because it gives a better range of motion to the head. We bring it back and we tab it in. We take the arms and we fold in and we take the arm and we fold it in and we can once again now close up the chest. We take these little wing sections and we bring them down on this hinge back here and straighten it up. Down on this hinge back here and we straighten it up. That's the majority of the plane done. We open the wings out on the sides, and then we open out the knee and the knee, and usually you would pick up this flap, but this time my understanding is you leave the flap down, and then you collapse the leg in, and bring this up over the flap this time. Again, collapse the leg in and bring this up over the flap. Make sure that we've got the legs combined together. Tab them in there. Make sure we have our wings lined up and we're almost done. What I will note is if you want to use blast effects, you need to leave the feet open and the blast effects go here in the heels like a little too high, which I don't like. But by rights, what you're supposed to do is Close those up. Now you can't use blast effects and the weird intakes are his toes. I think that this is based on a concept plane and I think these might be related to an F-22? I don't know. I don't know planes, man. And we put his null brace under his wings or here on his legs or up here on his arms. There's a lot of options. I place them right up there under that wing and over uh, here under that wing and boom in the end here we have Sandstorm in his beautiful plane mode. And so the transformation I said was a seven and a half on the other ones. Here honestly I have no issues. I, I don't and I can't tell you why. I don't know why I fiddle with the main seekers Usually with the main seekers, my issue is that chest, and it's a nuisance. The arms are a nuisance. The arms are still a nuisance here, uh, but the legs I think work a bit better here. They just they collapse easier. I'm gonna say that the transformation here is a solid eight and a half. As where the other one was a seven and a half, I'm saying here it's an eight and a half. I think it works a little bit better. Maybe because the tolerances are a little bit better on this copy, and maybe it's just my copy. So he was getting. Uh, a 10, a not, a, sorry, he was getting a 10 for his look, his paint apps. He was getting a 9.75 for his articulation because the tolerances seem to be a bit better here and an 8.5 for his transformation. Overall, the guy's about a 9. It's a great use. I hope the other cone heads are as successful as this cone head. Love the look here with that desert camo and he also has that like growling mouth like I man I dig this I do I wasn't a huge fan for the main seekers but so far I am all in for this mold for the cone heads and here we are once again and here he is so you know by now that the first caveat is that you know consistency is dependent upon the offerings that we have of a specific character and the previous offerings we've had of a specific character for Soundwave, the previ previous offerings we've had 
have all been comparable to the Siege slash Netflix version. That's why I have graded him the way that I have. Equally, the main trio of, of Starscream, Skywarp, and Thundercracker have also had the classics, then the FOC, and then, of course, the Siege mold. So we have a lot of engineering and a lot of versions to compare to there. But for the Coneheads, the story is actually quite different because the last time the Coneheads were updated, first of all, this guy's never been updated because his inspiration was a unreleased G1 Seeker, but the Coneheads nonetheless, the last time they were updated was way back with the Classics Universe line. So that's really the only main line comparison that we can make. MP wouldn't make sense, third party wouldn't make sense, though there are some stupendous offerings out there for both of those. This is a comparison of uh, versions of the same character for the main line collector, like me and probably like you. I think that while I look at the main Seekers and I think, you know what? I think that the play mode could be done better for them. We've seen engineering that's better. We haven't seen engineering that's better for the Coneheads, really. The improvements that needed to be made on the Coneheads, for the most part, were made here. The only exceptions that I would see is a wrist swivel would be nice. Again, I think that the arms themselves should have been the siege arms. And a waist. I really think that this mold suffers because of that. But this Conehead version of it, the knees stay tabbed in better, the um, joints move more smoothly, just like butter. So everything that's here works well, works better than it does for Starscream, than it does for Thundercracker, than it does for Skywarp, at least for my copies of them. I am encouraged, based on this guy, I am encouraged to see what Thrust, Ramjet, and... Um, Dirge are like. I thought that this guy was going to be the last one that I would get. Who knew he would be my first? But he does give me hope for this mold because I think he is fantastic. Let me know what you think about G2 Sandstorm. You know I appreciate you guys coming by and giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know, man, how important it is to you if you're in a position to help the channel to grow. You can use the donate link, check us out on Patreon, see what we offer to you through Teespring, or of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube while you're at it, man. Stick around, have some fun with us, and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget that somehow, someway, each and every single solitary day, man, you do make a difference. And I look forward, baby, to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams at the stop motion premieres or the old fashioned way right here inside the videos.